Hi, everyone. August 8, 2021, the fires in Greece and Turkey are also raging, just like here. Not just, you know, in the United States, but also in Canada. I was looking for information on Croatia. I know that there's fires there. can't find any. But this is Turkey. So I think the toll now is eight dead. Thousands evacuated. This is also Turkey. Helicopters and planes still fighting multiple blazes over the weekend. We have been continuing our extinguishing work here for seven days in the Milas region. The work we do here is to try to prevent the fire from reaching the villages in general and to reduce the existing damage in the villages. The fires, described as the worst ones remembered in the country, killing eight people so far and also claiming the lives of animals, destroying acres of forests and forcing thousands to evacuate as workers on the front line facing challenges. The biggest difficulty today is the visibility, very poor visibility due to the quantity of smoke still being generated by active fires. According to a top Turkish forestry official, over 200 fires have been brought under control since the outbreak began in more than half of the provinces in the country. But firefighters continued to work on Saturday to keep multiple more fires under control in two provinces. A summer heat wave, low humidity, and strong winds fueling the fires which have blazed through forests in the southern and southwestern coasts of Turkey. But the government also taking heat. A lot of anger that Turkey could have been prepared, but the government chose not to be prepared. Meanwhile, President Erdogan has blamed the opposition of a terrorism of lies. Uh, the uh, media watchdog has uh, said that local media should stop showing these wildfires and uh, some of the tragedy uh, that has ensued uh, because it is spreading fear and anxiety amongst the local population. And who knows if what she just said is true or not, right? Gotta love mainstream media. Greece is really... Greece... Here it is. Fire continues to haunt this island and the threat to its inhabitants is spreading. Flames threaten more villages and properties as planes and helicopters dump water on the burning landscape. Locals who've refused to leave their homes can only watch, worry and pray. It is a nervous time to live on Evia. Whatever you see from here, it just ruined charcoal, nothing, nothing left. The worst thing is being woken up at 3.30 in the morning uh, by the police telling you to evacuate and leave everything behind and run away, something that you can't really do. Ukrainian and Romanian firefighters have flown into Evia to help with the exhausting battle against the flames. British crews are also on the ground to help the overwhelmed Greek emergency services. Days without rain and high temperatures have left this land parched. This is a very difficult situation, one of the most serious situations till now that face in Greece. It depends uh, minute by minute. It depends also from the f uh, weather forecast, from the winds, and so on. Anyone left on the island is trying to do what they can to help tackle the worst fires most of them remember. Local Ilias Mastagoras is joined by his friend John Scobris, who is on holiday from Canada. Watching people lose their houses, 
watching people lose their land, their, their livelihood, it's sad. Every day is a cry. It's not uh, easy to see. You know, my family's here. I have four kids. Uh, what I take, give to him, to them, you know, it's not uh, easy for me. What they need here is rain, but temperatures are predicted to remain high in the coming days. Reducing optimism, the fires can be brought under control. More international aid is coming and it is badly needed. The fires on Evia have been burning for days now, displacing thousands and destroying homes. <clears throat> I wonder if we have any firefighters from other countries fighting the fires in California. That's a pretty big fire, Dixie Fire and Fly Fire. Um, huh. The locals, of course, can't help, right? But in Turkey and in Greece and in other countries, the men, the locals, they pitch in. The fire department put out the fire at 8, but then suddenly at 10 it reignited. We don't know how, and the two factories next to my building were burnt. Huh, fire reignited. So, the fires that I see and the damage that they create in, uh, well, not Canada. Um, I really shouldn't speak to this. Th these fires, these recent fires in Turkey and Greece, seem different. The damage seems different. They have different, um, a whole lot of their homes are not wood. In the Kryaniri area, 12 miles north of Athens, a children's play park is barely recognizable. This is the worst heat wave to hit Greece in 30 years, and flames swept through streets, burning cars, coming perilously close to these homes. A few people have returned now the fire's been contained, but most haven't. And in part, that's because many homes here are now without power, without water. But it's mainly because temperatures and winds are set to rise again in the coming days, and that could see this fire flare up again. The threat is still high here. Firefighter. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. <laughs> this resident of Crioneri is desperate. She had to evacuate her house, but her father stayed back to protect it. Now she watches from a distance as her neighbor's place is going up in flames. And she's praying her father can make it out in time. Anthony's house already burned down last night. Now he says he feels just numb and somehow overwhelmed. It's so sad. I don't know how to describe the feeling. I really haven't understood what has happened. In the village, some are still trying to fight the flames. This factory owner is trying to save his property armed with nothing but a garden hose. We're trying to water the bushes, get everything wet and stop the fire here. All around him, small business owners are following suit. But the fires are advancing rapidly and the police are struggling to get everybody out in time. Some residents begin to argue, pleading to get back into their houses to save some personal belongings. The fire is over there and the order is to allow nobody past. That also holds true for these volunteers. They can't help to fight the fires, but they still somehow want to be part of the communal effort. They don't allow us to go in there, so we give out water, juice, food to people passing, whatever we can do to help. But there is not much professional help. Every now and again, a plane or helicopter will pass over and drop their load of water onto the flames. Nelly saw her village saved once, but the fires have come back and are now threatening to consume everything. I feel really angry because uh, these things happen every year. But this year they left us all alone because uh, the government thought that we didn't need any firefighters, we needed more policemen. And now we don't have firefighters. Last night, Crioneri, this is my, my home, was burning and only the volunteers of the village saved Crioneri. That's a disgrace. Hour by hour the fires are advancing, fanned by the strong winds. 
the efforts to fight the flames seem helpless at best. A few hundred firefighters and some volunteers have to cover an area of thousands of acres. And all they have are hoses and some water from their old fire trucks. It's the third day in a row that we're working. We haven't slept at all. What to say? This is like a war in Greece. It's a war. Things are really tough. Within half a day, these fires in the northern suburbs of Essence have gone out of control. It looks like a losing battle. Interesting, isn't it? It's a war. It's a war. Yes, it is a war. It's really hard, man. Angry. I feel angry. I lost. I lost my home. I lost my home. I lost my my place. My birthday place. Nothing will be the same the next day. I am very angry. Most people here are very angry. The disaster, you can see it, right? It's, it's huge. Our villages are destroyed. There is nothing left from our homes, our properties, nothing, nothing, nothing. And we, we were all alone. Three days now, we're all alone. Nobody help. No one. People need help. Need help. They lost their, their homes. They lost their jobs. They need help. The government has huge responsibilities. All the governments. Firefighters from France, Switzerland, Sweden, Cyprus and Romania have been brought in to assist the Greek authorities in fighting the blazes. The country is experiencing its worst heat wave in more than 30 years. Authorities have warned that the risk of further fires remains high in many regions, including Athens and Crete. Uh so the world has been under this heat dome. It seems that the world is very windy and dry. And uh, it's, it's climate change. So, Dixie Fire. Cool weather slows raging California blaze as attention shifts to PG and E. And I do believe, look, we know corporations, uh, utility companies, they do not come out and take responsibility for anything. But for some reason, PG and E well, I think they're taking responsibility or coming out and saying, yeah, we think it's our fault to shut people up. So you try to you know, wake somebody up about what is taking place in these fires. They'll just say, you're crazy. PG&E even admitted. <sighs> yeah, although the fires cause remains under investigation, PG&E, California-based utility company, has admitted that its equipment may have been linked to the devastation. This fire has been a beast. Evacuee Jesse Roberts told San Francisco Chronicle, so many homes obliterated. We are a very small rural area and we feel like we're on our own. We have people camped out in the woods with children. We need help. We need help. That's what you're hearing from a whole lot of people. You know, and don't expect government. That's why for years, you know, I've been saying we've got to get it together and help one another because you cannot expect government to help you. We are at war. You hear the people in Turkey, you hear the people in Greece, you hear the people here in the United States. We are at war, so we do need to help one another. You know, and then, oh, we need to acknowledge just straight up, these are climate-induced fires, Newsom said. Climate-induced, well, PG&E is taking responsibility. What do you mean climate-induced? Oh, 
and The Guardian, with much of the U.S. now trapped in a vicious cycle of heat, wildfires, and drought, our climate. Journalism has never been more essential, and we need your support to keep producing it, so donate, donate, donate to The Guardian. For more lies and propaganda. So, this I can't get into, uh, but the Dixie Fire has now uh, destroyed more than 400 homes, buildings. Uh, I heard a broadcast today, early in the morning, that, or it might have been yesterday, but that it took out 105,000 acres overnight. Again, 49,000. Glimmer of hope, firefighters save a mountain town from Dixie Fire, which, um, you know, looking at some of the maps, oh, where is it? Right here. Saved. Chester. It's interesting. Chester looks like an affluent community. Am I wrong? Not that people uh, have not lost their very nice homes, people who are quite wealthy, so that's not what I'm saying, but I'm just wondering, you know, they saved Chester. You know, they were able to, you know, kind of carve out a little area to save, but A whole lot of towns and more towns have been evacuated. Yeah. Oh, it's it's not good. So the glimmer of hope, good. I'm happy for Chester. Um, there, let me see if I've highlighted. Yeah, firefighter is able to save Chester. Um, the Bidwell House in Chester. A Olsen barn saved. Homes in Chester sprayed with fire retardant. What about the homes also in um, Greenville and the other towns, that Canyon Dam? Were they sprayed? I don't know. That's... Mm. Okay, new evacuations, Janesville. It's an area in Lassen County. And Junk Junction City evacuated as well. These are evacuations today. Uh, the Fly Fire, that's pretty close. And I'm wondering if they're going to unite, but uh, new evacuations north of Quincy. This is really Indian Falls. The fire teared through, burning homes and vehicles. At least 16 homes and other buildings have been destroyed. And the Dixie Fire is 22% contained and 197,487 acres. And I can't not think about all of the animals. So in Plumas County, 7,478 people, mandatory evacuation. Where are they? Because I've been reading that these shelters are filled up. Well, you heard that there are families in the woods camping with children. Um, 119 in Butte County have been evacuated. So the, the numbers are just going up with, with uh, Janesville and Junction City and the area around Quincy. It's man. Widespread power outages, so I hope you have your cell phones charged. 
or there's some place that you can get it charged because power outages in these areas are not good. People need to keep tabs of what's going on. So here is the the new evacuation zones. Um, Chester, Caribou, Lasco, Norville, along with Junction City and Janesville. Oh man. I will link below to these maps. Um, these are the evacuation areas. But this fire is really big, very big. And I just hope all of you are okay, prepared to leave you guys in this area. Any help that you can extend to those who are suffering the consequences of this, do it. Do it. This is Quincy, by the way. So North Quincy area is evacuated. Oh, man. Well, here are the fires. Now it looks like you've got one, two, three. Look how this one juts out with its smoke. You got the two uh, is that smoke or are we looking at nanotechnology? I don't know. But what is happening up here? All right, guys. Stay safe and just be prepared for anything because we are at war. There is no doubt about it.